Well, 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 here we go again for this week's video and now it's finally time for part B of episode 3 in the mini-series Pimp My MIDI about the Valiton GP200. Welcome back to everybody. It is finally time for uh, completing this mini series started a month ago about uh, how we can use, how we can leverage uh, MIDI possibilities provided by our Valeton GP200 for uh, uh, reaching an interesting target that is the possibility to extend its uh, functionalities for a Partial support to scenes or snapshots as they are named in much more expensive machines. So, uh, being said that, let's just resume for a moment what we did so far and what we mean when we uh, mention scene or snapshot. Uh, you may remember that in episode 1 I've showed you how it is possible to transmit MIDI commands from a pedal board and in particular we used the M-Wave Chocolate I have here and we will be using it also today to send MIDI commands to our Valeton and uh, obtain this way some uh, improved functionalities like the possibility to extend the, the already a huge amount of buttons that is eight buttons but of course uh, for different machines it could be even more interesting because consider that if you have a vanilla gp200 like i have you will uh, be provided with eight control buttons that generally speaking are usually more than enough but if you have for example the junior version or the lt that has a, a, a reduced number of buttons and you feel that you would like to have more of them it is possible to extend them with an external pedal board by the way in that episode we connected the two devices through bluetooth using an adapter provided by um, Sorry, you can see the hit here already connected. And an adapter provided by uh, Chocolate to get, sorry, by my wave together with the, with the Chocolate, but that's not the only possibility. Please have a look at that video for much more details. In episode two, we have seen how to obtain a similar result using our smartphone, an Android smartphone in particular. I can anticipate that uh, I have in my schedule <laughs> the, the, to show you something similar using an iPhone instead of, um, of an Android smartphone for those of you that have iOS devices like iPhones or iPads. In any case, um, we were missing uh, in the part A of this episode, we have seen how we have the show the definition, what is uh, that it is usually intended when we speak about scene or snapshots and uh, uh, we have seen what uh, the, the machine, the GP200, can already do even without using the MIDI extension. That is uh, something I think uh, uh, can be, can be very, uh, very interesting and honestly speaking the feedback I received on that video shows that uh, probably it was uh, of very interesting for, for a lot of a lot of people. In any case, so thank you again for, for your feedbacks, for your comments, uh, they are always appreciated. If you're interested in the topics, uh, my suggestion is uh, please subscribe and ring and hit the bell. This way you will be notified when a new video is, uh, is available. So, of course, it's, uh, it's up on you, but in any case, this is a kind of feedback that I really appreciate because it shows that my my work that is done in my very limited spare time is appreciated and uh, <laughs> so it's uh, really uh, motivating for me. Okay, uh, being said that, uh, just a little leader review of what we intend when we speak about SYN. Very expensive devices like uh, Line, line 6 high um, hand devices or uh, Fractal or other, so devices that cost uh, three, four, 10 times uh, the, the price of GP200 have a support of what we name, uh, what they, they call scenes or snapshots that are not exactly new presets, are variation inside the same preset. For example, 
if you look at the preset that there is on the screen we could for example change change i don't know in this uh in this preset for example if we look at the chain give me a moment we have uh, the okay we have an amplifier we have many many blocks we could decide to turn on and off something or we could for example change the volume to have a bus to have a boost we could change the the, the amount of uh, gain for example in the amplifier in the distortion and so on so it is possible to uh, to save some snapshot that is the definition of uh, configuration so for example i want to have uh, the distortion at 20 percent the reverb at 80 percent and uh, the a booster because uh, this way i can uh, i can make a solo then i want i need to make uh, another uh, a clean part so i want another picture same amplifier same cab the same blocks but i deactivate the booster and i want to uh, to have uh, a much lower gain just to be on the breakup and so on that is all possible and that's what we name like uh, like scenes uh, the main advantage of using scenes compared to presets because honestly speaking you can obtain exactly the same result and even something more using the scenes uh, but normally the no, sorry sorry the scene, using the another preset so you save your preset and make your tweakings and this way you already have a scene but generally speaking more or less all the machines have a small gap when you switch between preset instead the change in between scenes is generally speaking faster so it is something that is very common uh, by the way not all the machines even the expensive ones uh, can uh, uh, can give you much freedom for scenes. Things, scenes are fine tunings uh, on that preset. Uh, they are not completely new, so you cannot change the routing. You cannot normally change, or at least uh, according to my experience to the devices I know, you cannot change the order of the blocks. Uh, you cannot change the type of block. So, for example, you cannot decide uh, to switch between two different distortions like uh, Green Overdrive and uh, TS9 uh, in, a, in, in, a, in, in two different scenes. You generally only change uh, some uh, uh, some 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 settings like uh, for example if you have an analogic uh, system so consider imagine to have all the pedals already configured that is the preset those pedals in that order that's the preset that's a preset but on each block of the chain on each pedal you can change different parameters the um, you can turn in, turn them on and off, or you can re change the volume, change the, the intervention, you can change the feedback of a delay, for example, and so on, or again in the amplifier, and so on. Those are what we, let's imagine you have this chain, you move your knobs on all the pedals, and you take a picture. That is the snapshot or a scene. And that is something that many devices allow to, to perform. This way you can also create some different variation without tampering your uh, preset. You can try different results, test them and define if, if you prefer one of the other and then save what you, what you prefer. It's not uh, strictly necessary. By the way, if you switch uh, preset uh, in Valetone between different, uh, snap different sorry, uh, presets, Without changing the amplifier and the cab, the glitch, the, the, the gap is so small that uh, it is really difficult to, to perceive it. So in my opinion, many of the uh, results you can obtain with scenes can be obtained changing a preset in 90% of the, the situation with modelers. Of course, with an analogic system, it will be much more difficult. And in my opinion, scenes in many situations are used because they are really familiar for those who are for, for those that are used to analogic systems because they they have something like that. By the way, it is common to, in analogic uh, gear, in analogic rig, to uh, configure the knobs, take a picture to to remember how it was set, in, and have the possibility to return exactly to that tone uh, whenever you want it. So that's uh, the main purpose of scene snapshot you will see that the valeton has some opportunities the limitation is that uh, well i can show you looking at uh, the manual looking at the manual if we look uh, sorry there is something not going well here give me a moment 
because I'm making some damage. Okay, let me move the. Okay, so I want you to focus uh, on the main one. So this one. If I look at that, uh, so let me turn off uh, the title this way you have less confusion okay if you look at the manual here i am it's the manual you have seen in the other episodes of the series please uh, i'm not I, I will try to skip what we have already seen during the the first two episodes because otherwise this <laughs> this video will take really a week so have a look at the at the manual you see that the commands that uh, the valeton can receive are not uh, hundreds there are a lot of limitations also comparing compared with similar priced uh, devices like the new xmg30 or so for example there is no way for uh, using midi commands to switch between uh, between uh, different uh, uh, distortions different effects for example change between an echo and uh, uh, plate reverb uh, plate reverb or a room reverb for example it's something that you cannot do by, by MIDI. There is no command in this uh, manual that uh, allows to do that. What are the possibilities that we have? And that is something that we've seen in, uh, in a moment. We have the possibility to change uh, presets, but that's, that's not our purpose. We have seen that uh, in the previous episodes. We have the possibility to set uh, the value of the expression pedal. So it, that is something that we can do. There is the possibility to assess the quick knobs, these three. So remember that we can do what we did in the last episode. So associate to any of the control buttons, any of the control buttons we have here, uh, the, mm, the switch uh, on off of uh, uh, FA chain uh, block, uh, blocks, but it is also possible to set the value of these, uh, these knobs. This way we have uh, the possibility to we, by MIDI. So it is what we would like to obtain. I can anticipate that it's not a really a spoiler. Uh, it is possible to send a complex list of commands through MIDI to the system in order to set anything like uh, the buttons pressed. So we can, for example, turn on the distortion, turn it off or something like that. That is something that we can do. For example, you see with CC50, I can, I can, uh, sorry, I can, uh, sorry because I'm <laughs> making, okay, with CC50, you see that uh, I can turn on and off the amplifier, of course, that's not probably something that we want to obtain. But for example, I can turn on and off with CC53, I can turn on and off the equalizer module or the delay module with CC55 and so on. So sending these commands, I can turn on and off some effects. But also there is the possibility, you see, with CC15, 16, sorry, to select the value of quick access parameter one with the 18 I can set knob 2 with 20 I can set knob 3 I'm speaking about these three of course it's not everything because if we look at the full chain we would have a lot of knobs all those available for the amplifier all those available for the the pre, the pre, -ampli the, the, the pre module all those available for the for, for, for the reverb or for the delay we need to pick a choice. We cannot use all of them. That is the main limit we have with the Valeton. We cannot fine tune everything. We cannot do a scene where we change all the parameters. We need to decide which three we want to, to set in particular. That's the main limitation. But it's something that we can do. And we cannot do it with the built-in functionalities of the device because it's not possible to associate to, an, to a control pedal the value of these knobs, for example, or the value of another parameter. But through MIDI, that is possible. So that is the main advantage that we can obtain in this, uh, in this uh, topic. So what we will be using for this uh, activity will be, let me resume very quickly, what is of course the valeton gp200 we will be using our midi pedal board we will be using 
my Android smartphone, as we did in episode 2 and 3, and in the smartphone we will have the, to use the application MIDI Commander we have been using in episode 2. So, nothing new. I will, foc I will not focus on the configuration of the uh, to, to installation of MIDI Commander, how to, to pair the devices. Please have a look at the previous episodes because there is really a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Don't look at this episode without watching the previous ones. In this one, we, can, we will focus on how to set a scene and how to use it. So that's what we want to obtain with this particular uh, topic. So let's uh, start uh, with episode with example one. I will show you two examples one to move to one scene, <coughs> sorry, then we will move to another scene in the same preset, and we will use in the first time the uh, pedal board to change to the first scene and the smartphone to change to the second one. This way you have the, all the combinations possibility. The first scene that we will like to, uh, to set up is composed, as you can see, scrolling below. Uh, we will activate a boost, so we need to set it. We will activate a chorus. We will reduce reverb to 10%, so it will, we will keep it on. And we will increase, increase the distortion in the distortion block to 70% in order to obtain a different, a different uh, result, of course. So, to obtain this result, we will need, first of all, to uh, set up our Valeton patch. So, let me move to the screenshot where we can have a look at the software. I will be using the software for this configuration because, in my opinion, that's uh, much easier. Of course, uh, we will switch to the manual, so let's keep it uh, beside it to uh, select the, 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 what, what we will need to configure. Okay, let's see what we wanted to obtain. We will need, but it's not, necess not necessary, consider that we decided to say we wanted to activate boost, um sorry let me resume for a moment what was the uh, what was the list of activities to do so we wanted to activate the boost activate the chorus reduce reverb to 10% and increase distortion to 70% so we will need of course to have at least these four blocks boost chorus reverb and distortion so i will start with a new patch very a very simple one like uh, this uh, this one you can have a look so let's find uh, a free i'm starting to from scratch with the free free one so scrolling here for example to the 38 uh, well to 38 a this is completely empty as you can see because all the blocks are gray so i'm starting with the easy configuration let's turn on a cab select which one we want a cab that has uh, uh, distortion otherwise uh, we sorry uh, that can sorry the amplifier not the cab i'm making confusion uh, okay let's select an amplifier like uh, a plexi this way we can have distortion in the possible parameters you see that we have gain presence uh, and all this all these knobs can be associated to the quick knobs in the, in the system also, we want to have a booster, so we can select uh, a boost, very simple boost in the pre-amplifier um, pre uh, section. As a cab, we can select, uh, well, this one is fine, UK dark, for example. Uh, we may need uh, a noise reduction, so move it uh, at the beginning and uh, turn it on so noise gate is activated we need the distortion for sure and i think that uh, a ts9 simulation is uh, more than good for that and we can change the gain here i, I would like to change the gain in this block uh, instead of the amplifier but it would be possible to do both of them then we will need to have a chorus so let's turn on the g chorus for example here 
and also we would like to have a reverb and let's make it for example uh, well a room reverb is fine to me and let's uh, imagine that the depth for the moment is 50 percent as you can see here uh, here on top uh, that is the the amount of delay that we can, of the of reverb we can uh, we can obtain uh, so let's uh, keep it like that and that is uh, the our patch let's save it uh, so give you give it a name tj episode 3 for example and now let's see uh, we want uh, during uh, the the selection as we have seen in the description of the example before we will need to uh, turn on and off the, uh, the turn on the chorus turn on the boost that is easy we want to um, change the reverb amount and the distortion amount those need to be associated to the knobs so we can do it in the patch settings in this uh, here there is a patch settings where you can see the gear so pressing the gear it is possible to decide what to associate to the control buttons we have seen that last week but also you can select what to associate to the quick access uh, parameter for parameter one we want to we said change the reverb you see that uh, i cannot change the, the the type of reverb you see that it is already pre-selected with the reverb i have available that now selected this room and i want to change the mix uh, sorry, the, 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 yes, it is named I mix. Uh, it can create a little, a little uh, confusion, but that is uh, the, the point. If we go to the, let me show you what I'm referring to. If I select the reverb, you have the mix that is uh, how much reverb you will hear combined with the, with the dry signal. And then you have some pre delay, some decay, so how fast the, the, the reverb will, uh, will stop. I'm sure you're familiar with this. So, in this quick access parameter, reverb room mix is the amount of reverb. When we say we wanted to move the reverb to 70%, that is the, that is the, the purpose. The second parameter is the distortion so looking at the distortion you see that od9 so the, the simulation of ts9 is already of the screamer is already gotten, uh, done and the distort the amount of distortion is set in using the gain so we associate this to the gain the third one is free to you uh, for the moment it is already selected with patch volume i'm keeping it like that so let's save again the patch now you should see it also on the screen if i select uh, this one I have uh, sorry I need to go back because now we are in the pre-selection you see that we have uh, the blocks selected here the amount the mix of the reverb and also the block of the reverb is appearing the amount uh, the gain of distortion and the patch volume so we have selected what to do with these uh, three uh, three points uh, three three knobs uh, to to set let me show you again what it is that we want to obtain and in a moment we will see how to configure our pedal board okay activate boost activate chorus reduce reverb to 10 percent increase distortion to 70 percent so that is what we want to obtain we will start configuring the pedal board this one as i said you the first example we will activate it using this uh, this one i will skip uh, all the steps uh, for pairing connected to smartphone con and so on i will just show you how to configure it uh, because for the rest please refer to episode one where there was a step-by-step -step guide uh, what are the modalities or so on so let me hide the screen let me show you my smartphone you see that uh, here i am already connected let me take a couple of step back okay we will need the app cube suite for configuring the pedal board the pedal board must be turned on and paired with your smartphone again refer to episode one you press foot control 
Make sure that uh, advanced custom mode is selected. It's exactly what we did uh, in the previous video. Then we can uh, configure foot switch A. Foot switch A now will activate the first scene we have decided to create. So let's clean up uh, everything. I will uh, cancel all the configuration we have done uh, last time uh, in the, all the banks. Okay. Look at that. There are the, the modality we have set is a step short, step long. That is the last one in the list. This way, the pedal board can work when you press it lightly and release it immediately, or when you press it longer. Uh, and you have two different functionalities, bank A and bank B. But for our purpose, we just need one, so it's not a problem. You can select what you want. Just consider one thing that is also a topic that emerged by some comments uh, and some in the in the Facebook group. If uh, you select this active this uh, modality, so bank A and bank B with a short and long press, the in case of short press. The message is sent when you release the button, otherwise there is no way for the system to read a long press. That's why if you want instead to have immediate reaction, so as soon as you press the button, the message is already sent, the change is already done, you need to select one of the other uh, modality, like for example symbols single step. But personally I prefer flexibility, so I'm generally keeping both of them even if today we will use only bank A. Where is the great trick using this pedal board in particular? I cannot assure that any other MIDI pedal board can provide something like that. Now, to change the scenes, uh, we, we have been speaking about uh, a moment ago, and uh, I'm showing it again. We need to send a different message, one to activate the booster block, one to activate the chorus, one to change the reverb that is associated to the first quick knob. So let me one associated to the first quick knob that is here. One to change the distortion that is associated to the second knob on the, on the system. And so there are four commands we need to send all together. So you may say, is that possible? With this one, yes, because if you press the plus, uh, you can add commands and then configure them. And you can see that you can send, you can select uh, many commands. Honestly, I don't know what is the maximum amount, but you can send different messages all together in one shot. When you press it, all of them are sent together. So now let me click again so we can try. The first one, we need to activate a boost, so select it. Look at the, the manual. To activate boost, boost is in the pre-module, so we need to activate the, let me show you, you see that the booster is here, is the pre-module, so we need to turn on the pre-module, okay, let's keep it off for the moment, this way you can, we can, you can see when it is turned on, okay, so to turn on the, oh sorry, Again. Uh, if you look at the, um, at the MIDI commands, uh, to turn on the pre-module, we need to send CC48, this one, and if we want to turn it on, we need to send a value between 64 and 127. We have been using 100 last, uh, last time, so let's do it. Click on the line, select CC, channel 1 is fine, is what is received normally. Select CC, control change, look again at episode 1 if you have doubts. The data to be sent is, the first one is the CC number, that is 48, in this case, so 48. And data 2 is the amount, it must be between 64 and 127. Let's keep it 100 and we can save it. This is the first command. The second command is to activate, to activate chorus. Chorus is uh, one of the mod uh, is the mod module. The G chorus is inside the mod module. You can see it here. So this one. So we need to turn on the mod module. Let's turn it off here for a moment. And again, 
now the control change is 54 we need to use and again the value must be between between uh, uh, 64 and 127 so select the line press cc now it is as i said 54 the module we need to select and again the value is 100 i'm going fast because i know that you are familiar with this third option we need to reduce reverb to 10 percent so reverb must be on we are not changing its status at the moment only its value it's possible also to combine other things so let's add another line and let's check which uh, commands we need to use the reverb is associated to the uh, first knob the first knob we have visible in here this one reverb first knob first quick knob delay uh, distortion for second quick knob so follow me from there from here so quick knobs are mentioned in this uh, in this point quick access parameter one quick access sorry uh, Okay, quick access parameter one, quick access knob two, quick access knob three. They change the parameter into knob, so there is a typo in the in the manual, but these are the ones. So what we need to use is the first one is CC16 for quick access parameter one, so for the reverb, and 18 quick access parameter two for the distortion. Let's do like that. As I said, we want to have reverb, so CC again for Parameter one is 16, so select, uh, sorry, let's select data one 16, and the value we want to set it to 10%. You see that uh, uh, the quick access parameter one, so CC16 can change between zero and 100. That of course means zero to 100%. We want it to 10%, so let's set it to 10 and save it let's add the last one we want to change the distortion and put it to 70 percent again into the line distortion is quick access knob 2 that is this line so it is 18 cc 18 and the value uh, can change in this case between 0 and 127 that is probably a little more uh, more difficult to, to associate to my experience there is a, 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 bag, a bug here because that's not true they are changing between 0 and 127 generally they change between 0 and 100 that's why i'm selecting cc data this time is quick access knob 2 so it is 18 okay and now we can select a value between 0 and 100. We want 70%, so let's put 70 and save it. When I press the button A in bank, foot switch A, it's mentioned on the top of the screen. With the bank A, that is the short press, the, these four commands will be sent to the device. So I'm sure that you want to see that uh, happening so well let's uh, look it uh, from the hiding for now you can close the smartphone it's not necessary anymore so i'm hiding it uh, this way you, you can not make confusion let's have a look at the machine but in particular look uh, at the device if i now press uh, the now that we have configured uh, our pedal board we can turn off the smartphone so the, the app and everything in particular make sure that you detach it from the bluetooth because now i need to connect it to the balloton so let me hide it let me show you instead the balloton now i'm pairing it with the connector episode one again now they should be paired so what you will be expecting if i select or the press should be off the modulation should be off Let's imagine that we have the gain at, uh, I don't know, zero in the overdrive. Then let's imagine that we have the reverb very high, for example, at 100%. We are coming from a, a start, an intro, an arpeggio intro. 
Now, what we are expecting when I press this button shortly, the button A, is that the pre module turns on, the mod module, so the chorus, so the booster and the chorus are turned on, the distortion goes to 70%, and you can look at it uh, this here, and the reverb goes to 10%, so this one is changing. Now I'm pressing it, let me try to not to hide the screen click and it happened like magic you see that now the pre so booster is on chorus is on you see that uh, and you can look at it uh, at the screen so maybe it's easier that the distortion gain is now at 70 and the reverb is at uh, 10 as we wanted to do <laughs> so this one was uh, affected effective as we wanted it to, to happen and that is the result that we can obtain with the pedal. Let's imagine that any kind of these things, including more commands, if you want to use also the third knob, turn on and off other blocks, you can do it within the, the, the pedal. You see that you can associate many commands to the same uh, to the same control and that is a possibility to change scenes so for example you could use the regular control uh, buttons to change preset and for specific uses you can change the scenes inside the same preset it's not uh, so easy because in any case you have seen that the configuration required is uh, long and also it is very strict because you need to associate to the quick knob the value you want and you need to decide what to do with the, the pedal board. There is one additional trick I would like to suggest and that is what I normally do to make it more flexible because in any, every time you want to create a, a scene you need to fine tune the configuration of the pedal in this case, not so practical. At least for turning on and off blocks, instead of sending directly the command like turn on pre, turn on uh, the, the mods or so on, you can do it more easy. For example, you can create a patch here where you decide to send instead the command uh, the command control, uh, the, the command control, like for for the buttons, or you can associate them to this uh, to these buttons. This make it uh, much easier, in my opinion, to to use it. Well, okay, it's a possibility. I wanted it's a, an exercise. I wanted to show you that it is possible, and in some certain live situations, it can be useful. If you want a specific preset to, to, to set and you need to have those values changing, you don't want to do it uh, in a different way. You want to do it uh, very well, very easy and uh, very precisely, you can do it. But of course, as I said, you need to fine tune your patch and you need to fine tune the configuration of the pedal. Okay, that is the main, <laughs> the main drawback uh, in my opinion. Now that we have seen uh, how to activate uh, example one uh, with the button in the pedal board, I would like to show you another example that goes together with this one so that uh, it is uh, somehow the opposite of what we have been, uh, done with the example with example one. So let me show you very quickly what are the options we would like to do. We want to stop the boost, so turn off uh, the pre block. Stop the chorus, so turn off also the modulation that was activated before. Now, this time we want to increase the reverb to 100% and reduce the, uh, the distortion to 10% to so make it very low. That is the point, we the, the, the result we want we want to obtain. So it is mainly, the in the first one we have activated the pre, activated the mod, so booster and uh, uh, chorus in our, uh, in our uh, preset. Sorry, let me return to the preset we had before because I don't know why I changed it. It was this one, the 38A, this one. Don't save this one, okay. We want to turn off the pre, so the boost. We want to turn off the chorus. 
we want to change the distortion gain and push it up to uh, sorry push it to turn it down to be close to the uh, to the break even in the previous example we pushed it to 70 percent and also we want to change the reverb value that was moved to 10 percent in the previous example to 70 percent so set it as we did for the previous example it was 10 percent we turned on the chorus we turned on the boost and you see they are both the block pre and the block mode are both on the distortion was set to 70% in the previous one, so you can have a look. You can see that also here in the knobs of the of the system, so it's important to, to check this one. We will use the same patch because this way the quick knobs are already associated and this way it should be much much uh, easier to to do that but this time we are not doing it with the pedal board we are doing it with the smartphone so you can see what we did in epic episode 2 applied also here so uh, now let me hide the screen and show me the, the my smartphone screen they are already connected the smartphone is already paired to the uh, mvave uh, uh, ms1 connector so for all these uh, these steps please look episode two otherwise this will never last and let's focus uh, on the main topics let's open midi commander it is the same app we have been using last time make sure in the options uh, in global in, uh, settings that uh, the midi system selected is the glic technology synco because uh, i've seen that midi commander has the bad habit to select uh, an, another um, dummy system and this way is not working uh, as expected uh, may, be patient uh, if the update on my screen uh, is uh, a little slow because uh, it is uh, a matter of uh, connection because to use the usb to connect uh, the the midi commands i cannot uh, uh, show you the screen through usb it is through wi-fi so it's a little, there is a little gap so i will try to wait for the update every now and then make sure that you are on the page buttons so the first one selected as we did last time we may remember you may remember that we selected some buttons and we made some configuration and now select the button one for the purpose we want to so press the pencil on the top right corner this way we go to the um, setting uh, option you see that uh, in fact a gear appeared on the bottom of the screen press the gear make sure that the but the, this one selects uh, the number of buttons to be shown if it is only like that instead if you keep pressed uh, the button you want to configure another sub menu appears select modify and then uh, you can have uh, another screen where the buttons uh, is associated here it's important to have a look at one thing as you have seen in the configuration of the pedal we need to send four commands all together also in example two because we want the command to turn off the pre the command to turn off the chorus and the command to turn to 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 change the value of priest of uh, knob one and the value of knob two that is uh, the main difficulty we can have uh, here to to make it work that's why it's important to have a look of these possibilities so uh, just uh, make sure that uh, you are uh, set to that li like that so let's have a look at the screen it's a little complicated we need to send four commands as we as, as uh, we have seen you may see on the screen that it is possible to send to select the midi channel zero is fine zero is the first channel sometimes it is numbered like zero like sometimes it is numbered like one so in any case let's keep it like that program change can be it is not useful for the valeton we can select instead Control change number one and control change number two. So you see that we have two possible values that we can send together. That's not completely true because you see that there are 
some uh, buttons on the top like mm1 mm2 if you go to mm2 you can enable other control changes so let's uh, go to the first one and select what to do again we need to use the control change we have been using before you may remember the pre sorry let me switch on off the okay the pre module here is uh, activated and deactivated by control change 48 so let's select 48 on the scroll 48 48 okay then we need to select the value you see that uh, for preset uh, if we want to sorry the screen is updating the value we can select is between 0 and 127 in general it can vary here you see that if we select the value between 0 and 63 that means off so let's just throw away 10 for example it's fine and let's go like that the second command we want to send is to deactivate the mode mode is a control change 54 so we go on control change 2 so the second command we can select select 54 this time 54 okay and again the value between 0 and 63 means off so again we can select 10 because we want to turn it off that's the chorus and that is the first uh, the, the configuration of the first uh, two commands now let's have a look at the other two select mm2 sorry the screen is updating very slowly let me wait for it to refresh oh my god it's very very slow mm2 well okay now it is on uh, program change is off. We need now have two other control change, one and two. And now we want them to be to send the commands to the two knobs, to the quick knob one, quick access parameter one, and quick knob two. Quick access parameter one is 16. So let's select the control change 16. 16. Okay. And the value it can be from 0 and 100. This one is associated to reverb. We want to, to push reverb to, to the top, to 100%. So, as a value, let's throw 100. So, we are selecting it. Okay. And give it, give it OK. You see that. Control change 16, value 100. Quick access parameter 2 is 18, so in the second row we need to select the 18, so let's scroll to 18, okay, and we want, this one is associated to distortion, we want to reduce the distortion to, very, to a very low value that was in particular um, let me see what we decided. I want to be faithful to what I declared. Okay, to 10%. So let's move it to 10%. So the value we are throwing is only 10. Okay. Now this can be saved pressing the disk on top of that. You can rename the button, whatever you want. So you can do a lot of changes. For example, if I want to sorry to let me configure it if you want to change the name of this button and call it, call it tj sin 2 for example that's what we did very practical because you can give it a specific name now it is possible to test it so let's have a look at the screen i'm hiding for a moment the screen of the Oh, sorry let me do it like this so i can show you still the screen of the smartphone because we don't need the manual anymore and we can have a look at what is happening here i could also show you maybe the machine let's move it here this way you can have a look at that as well okay so you can see what's uh, what's happening you see that uh, we have this uh, preset configured 
with all the, its uh, topics with the, the knobs uh, here but that have a certain value we have the pre on we have the, the the mode on and we have some value when i press tj scene 2 what is happening is okay. oh sorry i'm still in edit mode when i press it non succede niente Now that is, our scene is configured, you see that uh, also the name has been set to the TJ Scene 2. Uh, well, I can uh, move something on the screen. Uh, give me a second, this way you can have a, a better look. So, for the moment, we are not using the manual anymore because we already selected the, the topics we wanted. So, let me move the, the software here. This way you can have a look. Let me show you the, uh, the screen, uh, move it here so you can look at it. So let's uh, see again what is the configuration. The present preset has the pre a booster turn on, the chorus a mode turn on, the distortion is set with the gain at 70 as we did uh, last time, and the reverb is at 10%. What we are expecting when pressing the button TJ Scene 2 is uh, to make the changes required. So the boost should turn off, the mode should turn off, so the chorus should turn off, the distortions should uh, reduce to 10%, now the gain is 70, and the reverb should be pushed to 100%. Well, look at the screen of the smartphone. I'm still in the configuration mode, so press again the, make sure that you press again the, uh, the the pencil on top. Again, double check that uh, in global settings uh, you have uh, USB MIDI device uh, GLE technology. Otherwise, nothing will work. Again, as I told you, uh, MIDI commands has this. Uh, <laughs> when you make configuration, it uh, goes to that default. I don't know exactly why. But now let's try pushing the button and see what what's happening. Well, it was really fast. You see that uh, the pre is turned off, the, the, the mode is turned off. Now let's have a look at the delay, the, the reverb. You see that the mix went to 100% and you can see that also on the screen. And we are expecting that distortion has a gain at 10% now, and that's true. Consider that this is the opposite scene of the two of the other one. These two examples I've showed you are uh, at the purpose to um, to allow you the possibility to to have, for example, a configuration for um, a clean, uh, very deep with high reverb situation with close to break up with just a 10% of distortion on the two screamer. And then you can have, for example, a solo pressing, the, selecting the other, the other example when you have a booster, so the volume is expected to increase, more distortion, less reverb, because a lot of, the, of reverb with distortion sometimes looks weird and it is not so good for, and I, I personally I don't like it too much for, for solos, but it is something that, that you can do. So if you, I've showed you how to set example one to the pedal board and example two to the smartphone. Of course, what I'm expecting if you are using these two scenes is to have both of them on the same device, uh, for example, on two buttons for the pedal board or on two bu buttons uh, in uh, MIDI commands. And I'm expecting that now you are able to do it uh, very, uh, very quickly, very easily, because uh, nothing is, uh, you just need to follow uh, this, the, everything step by step. Just again, make sure you watch before this, uh, the other videos, otherwise nothing will make sense and uh, you will be really puzzled by what I'm showing you. In any case, uh, let's uh, resume again what are the limits. You have seen that we can turn on and off blocks and we can select the value of the, the knobs uh, that we have on the device. So what can, can't we do well, that is normally expected in a scene? We cannot set every single knob. So for, if we are limited to three, only three are, po are possible to be set. In my opinion, according to my experience, uh, can be are they just too few? Are they enough? It depends. 
it depends on how much changes you want to do in scenes generally speaking scenes are very low, uh, low uh, changes but sometimes uh, the number of knobs can be more because you change a couple in two or three blocks so three in my opinion are a, a little uh, i would prefer to have more of them uh, but for many situations they are enough Consider also that, as we said before, if you are not changing the amplifier and the cab, when you switch between presets, Valeton is very fast. If there is a really small pause between the two modalities you want to have, and normally they are available, otherwise uh, you, you, uh, you you cannot feel the, feel the change. The delays uh, are very, very short. Of course, the change is sudden, so if you are from coming from a clean uh, sound and you have uh, a sustain, some, uh, a note that is going on, you will change the modality and it will switch. But this happens also with uh, analog uh, machines or any, anything else. It depends on the signal you throw from your, from your guitar. So, in my opinion, there, it is possible to make it work uh, in any possible situation. You don't have those long delays that I have uh, uh, heard in some very inexpensive and very old machines, because in my opinion, something changed in the digital systems, and now the gaps are uh, uh, becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, in any case, uh, of course, there are some limitations, as we said. One of the strongest ones uh, you may feel is that uh, uh, if uh, two effects are in the same bl effect block, you cannot switch between them. For example, you cannot turn off the booster and uh, turn on a compressor, for example. That is something that, for example, I do very often when I do, for example, I start with uh, an arpeggio, like an 80s arpeggio, where a compressor is definitely needed, I keep the compressor on, then I turn it off, not to lose the dynamics for the rest of the song, and maybe I activate a booster for a uh, uh, for um, for having uh, an increase in vol volume for or in, in, in volume or in distortion or both uh, for uh, a solo or for uh, another a specific part. Here we cannot do it because the blocks are in this, the, the the two effects are in the same block. We cannot change different effects in the same block. We just can turn them on and off. But I have to tell you that. Unless uh, you, we speak about other completely different uh, machines, uh, mo much more expensive machines that have uh, a longer effect chain uh, 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 available that can have instead of 11, maybe 20, 25 uh, uh, blocks in the chain, uh, maybe in two or three different paths. That's something that we cannot do here. This one is, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, considering the price, this machine is incredible in my opinion, in my personal opinion, and it is really a live uh, rig uh, that you can use uh, in uh, many, in, in many, many situations. Also, in my opinion, the distortions in particular are sometimes better than something that I've heard even on the uh, HX Stomp or even more expensive machines. So, you know, it depends on what you do, what you want. It is, in my opinion, unless you are really a high level professional, probably this the machine is more than enough. You have seen what uh, we can do to combine some functionalities using the MIDI as a leverage, that is uh, one of the possibilities to combine some effects. For 99% of the uses, in my opinion, we have uh, more than 200 uh, uh, memory, memory slots available and uh, it is possible to create many, many presets. So personally, I tend to prefer switching preset instead of using scenes. But if you really need it, there are some possibilities that are close enough to the definition of a preset. As a snapshot, as we have, uh, we have told, there are limitations. We cannot change every single parameter, but if you need to change every parameter, in my opinion, you definitely need to, to, to create another preset. Otherwise, it uh, makes uh, little sense, in my opinion. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Okay, so there are some uh, uh, side topics uh, I would like to address uh, in future videos. In particular, you have seen how to do all of this uh, with Pedalboard, with uh, an Android smartphone. It is possible also with uh, an iPhone or an iPad that maybe is more interesting for uh, musicians. We tend to use that, that kind of devices. I'm I'm, I schedule also this uh, part. I, I'm, I cannot promise it will be the next video because I have something else uh, in my pipeline. But this one uh, will, be, will definitely appear on this channel. So in, 
according to your feedback, <laughs> I will decide in which position, what is the priority I will give to, the, to, to, to that topic in particular. So again, I'm uh, strongly suggesting you to subscribe, uh, ring the, be the bell. This way you are notified when a new video is available. And uh, please give me a feedback. Everything is appreciated. I really appreciate also critics because if you have suggestion to help me improve uh, the contents, uh, my uh, clarity when showing you uh, some topics. If something was not definitely not clear, you're not able to replicate it or you have uh, trouble, feel free to ask. I will uh, try to help you uh, at the best of my possibilities. Of course, I cannot fix <laughs> bugs in the system, but if uh, my exposition was not so clear on some topics, I will try to to help you to, to reach the, the, the final result I have shown you in this in this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it interesting. It was very long, I know. So, <laughs> so thank you for your patience if you reached uh, until this, this point. I'm renewing to you the invitation for uh, future videos. Subscribe, <laughs> ring a bell. Bye-bye, everybody.